know, the title I have with Greenpeace Belgium is uh, Jedi's Officer. So <laughs> justice, equity, <laughs> oh God, uh, diversity, inclusion, and safety. So it's kind of very interesting, you know, the word Jedi, Jedi yeah. <laughs> Star Wars, and this act because one of the first actions we did uh, in Belgium uh, one of the music which I was suggesting was to put the Star Wars music because when the Prince of Monaco was coming to be at the Belgian Parliament and we had this music, you know, dan, 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 especially when he was getting down from the car and all. And so it was like very interesting uh, back then, you know, to see uh, capitalism as this empire and all these bureaucrats, elites, you know, instead of wearing the black costume, they actually represent that, you know, kind of, at least that's how I see it. Mm. And XR, not only XR, but I think many other similar groups and similar movements, uh, they are rebels. The word itself, you know, we're rebels. And it's the rebellion, you know. Sometimes people do actions across the globe without recognizing uh, the cultural context or the people on the ground. So when you look at the Extinction Rebellion, which for me is very wide, at least in the man- in the positions of you know decision making, it's wide, very wide. The co-founder is uh, a UK-based white man, cis man. The, the 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 global minority culture, which also people say white supremacy culture, the culture is a mindset. It is not real, and you can shift that mindset from one to the other. But to do that, it's work. People are comfortable. People with privileges, they're comfortable. They don't want to uh, work or do the work. They want to sit relax. Why should I read a book about a nice racism? Or uh, why should I read a book about why I'm no longer talking to... Oops, oh, my about... God. I was just going to talk about that book. Yeah, it's sorry. Go on. This book. And then, uh, uh, yeah, this is another white author. But, it's, uh, but it's, it's interesting also to know what white people are doing or white-skinned people are doing from the minority group or the culture uh, to understand this. And it's interesting. And in the NGO sector... They're kind of blind. They don't want to because they're like, they don't want to. And uh, and I've been facing that, right? You, I think as you guessed, not guessed, as you said it, it's been eight years, you know, I've been trying to get employed. People love to use me for my brain, my intelligence, whatever. But when it comes to work, the system is designed to discriminate you. But actually the system of discrimination is more like an oppressive system. At the beginning of this year, I was rock bottom and nobody was there, Right? And I screamed out in the groups, which I'm a community leader, right? And there are two or three people who responded saying that, yes, one of the most important things, which like groups like XR or all, is, is to do mutual aid or solidarity to those who are most affected. But the thing is, if the people who do not understand what is most affected, and they think that just because they are a tree hugger, they are also oppressed, that's a problem. I've been calling out, calling out, calling out Extinction Rebellion within because I love the movement. I still love the movement. I think it's such an important movement. It gives you hope. XR needs proof of concept. At the moment, they are following Roger Hallam because he has a PhD in movement organizing where all the things he took from uh, in his organizing is from our part of the world. But he believes because he's pretty good at believing and, and being stuck in the belief. And I don't want to call... I mean, I don't want to be too judgmental because he, he, everybody has mental health problems. And who, for whom is extinction? Is it the extinction of the people who live in like the Northwestern Hemisphere? Are you ready to understand other cultures or are you going to continue behaving your way? And this many people are going to come. They're going to come from different parts of the world with different worldviews, with different realities. How are we going to support these people? Yeah. And I believe extinction rebellion has to immediately change my people in Sri Lanka, those people will have to leave and they need to be able to go further north. My father is in prison in India for being a refugee. Oh my God. For the last three years, extrajudicially. And I'm openly, before I would not even talk about it because it puts me into trouble. But now I'm, 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 I'm okay. What can they do? I'm going to tell the truth. <laughs> Germany. <laughs> Germany put this up. It says, shut up, Roger. I don't know. We talk about tell the truth, tell the truth, tell the truth. And here you have a leader who's blind, literally. And he then invites other blind people who are blind. And then they say racist stuff. They don't even apologize. I've been in XR for what? Two and a half years. 
they don't apologize. They ask somebody else to send me an email to say sorry. What? You can't talk to me directly? You're afraid of what? What are you doing non-violent direct action then? If you can't face up and stand up when you do something wrong, no, too much of ego. Even close people of mine, very close people. I'm sure that if they watch it, they will know. Even they, they worry so much about when somebody dies in their part of the world because of floods. And they don't care about the millions of people dying right now in the global, uh, global majority, in the global south. But when somebody happens here, oh, oh well, my, our people are still in refugee camps. Oh. And then tell the truth. You don't, you don't tell the truth. You're telling the most convenient truth, which is helping you. We, I'm not part of a cult. I can criticize. And Roger Hallam, he is a cult leader. And everybody who is like worshipping him is a part of the cult leader. He doesn't care about my people being in prison, being killed, being abused, being tortured. Why the heck do I care about his image? Sorry for shouting. You talk about how you might be more effective, kind of ironically, after your involvement with XR, you might be more effective in a more hierarchical um, a, a more con kind of conventional, if you like, activist organization. I will be working 16 hours with G Greenpeace Belgium, 16 hours with Greenpeace International, meaning I will basically be uh, having a touch of what the global, you know, the global work is, like with Extinction Rebellion Global Support, we did the same thing. And I am still on the ground, you know, so I'm still doing direct actions. I'm going to still be there. Proper uh, organizing is you build momentum with everybody. Every key player is important, other than a fascist. Everybody else is important because fascists are troublemakers. It's interesting that you brought up eco-fascism and how some unexamined racism within XR can, can lead to or have an affinity with eco-fascism, and, and especially with um, not dealing with the potential massive migrant crisis that we're facing. I don't know if you know much about the deep adaptation movement, uh, which many people in XR are... Uh, uh, have an affinity with and I, I'm worried about the potential eco-fascism they are that that could lead to they are yeah. the DAF Deep Adaptation Forum is a white supremacy group and you can do put it down there yeah, yeah, yeah. I do can to say more can about that say huh? more, do you want to say more about that the thing is whatever I say because they're Jim Bendel or whatever his name I don't even want I don't like names who are egocentric very smart person I love the writing it was brilliant okay but it's very europe centric yeah and they did have uh, uh i don't know a bipoc daft group to help uh, like an advisory group for daft to become a bit more inclusive oh really i didn't know about that yeah yeah and a friend of mine worked there and maybe if you want to interview them that'd be a nice interview i guess oh yeah and they quit because of the the internal biases and oppression they face. Literally, it, was, it wasn't discrimination, it was oppression. And this is very, very dangerous. It's very dangerous. This is like proto-fascism. Yeah. So in anybody, the thing is, you can't be lukewarm, right? You know, I, I like this about Jesus Christ. You know, uh, he says, you know, you, you have to be cold or hot. You can't be in between. I spit you out of my mouth. So similarly, you either are fascist or you're not fascist. Nazism kind of, uh, thanks to Martin Heidegger, and thanks to many other thinkers, German thinkers like Hegel and all, they systematically build up to the moment where somebody like uh, Adolf Hitler could come to power and who could actually perpetrate such a huge atrocity towards another community of people, of human beings. It doesn't do with the mind, it's the ideas. And that's why it's very important. We need to shift the ideas. We need to shift the paradigm. We need to move from this idea of one way of doing stuff, which is leading us to eco-fascism to a way where we are truly inclusive. It means they need to put in money to help BIPOC people. They need to help put money to help the global majority people because you took it all. If most countries around the world are rich, including Canada, UK, it's because of colonization. And you continue doing that. If you didn't have colonization, you would not have the infrastructure or science or anything. You have it thanks to us. I think it's the courtesy this is, this is human rights violation to me. The fact that there's no concept of reparation to those people from whom you stole. You didn't ask, you didn't take nicely. You stole from us. Just give us back the money. And I'm sure, <laughs> no, no, just give us back. 
without interest. Now, don't even give us Kutta's interest. Just give us back what you stole from us. From, and here I'm talking for Sri Lanka, right? I'm talking for my country, small island. Just give us back. And I tell you, my mother would have not been killed because of the war. My father won't be in prison. So many Tamil people would not be murdered and killed. Right? Who did this? The colonizers. It is time colonization started, carbon emission increased. Did I see a clip of you? Uh, was it you? And, and were you at COP26 or were you somewhere else? Where you, oh. had a, where you had a tussle with some cops and a bicycle. <laughs> you know what the police did? They first arrested our spokesperson, which is illegal. So we couldn't give any more press or whatever. My colleague who was arrested. And then they arrested the, the legal uh, liaison, or the police liaison. And then I'm trying to leave, you know. I'm like, hey, I'm a steward. Let me go. I don't want to be arrested. This is not my thing. I'm not here to be arrested. I'm here to support the activists. And he was pushing me. I, but I'm a steward, let me go. And he was pushing me out. But I recorded it all. I recorded it. I was having a camera ready, recording. I'm not going to let a, a medieval knight or a police officer or a colonial um, landowner to tell me what I should do and I shouldn't do as long as I do not do anything wrong or harm. And the police jumps in. Bam! Because they know me. I've been doing actions for some time. And I don't think they jumped on me just because I was mobilizing or organizing. They wanted to give a statement. They wanted to give a message. Because I'm from a different culture, right? They punch me, they hit me. I've seen violence, okay? So finally they arrested me violently. Four people came, punching me, hitting me in the ribs. Pulling my uh, mask down and I'm asthmatic. No, right. They're basically protecting the elite in Belgium. All the BIPOC people who quit XR, I understand you had to do it. I also wanted to. You asked me to quit many times and I didn't quit because I have resilience and because of the fact that my people already saw the apocalypse. So I can be in, by, uh, in my refugee status, in my perspective hold on to the violence except was perpetuating. A lot of BIPOC people couldn't do that. But I think it's time that we reclaim XR and everything else around it as well. Simple as that. That's one thing. Reclaiming doesn't mean that we need to push out all the white people from the movement. No, it means, yes, decenter the, the, the conversation. Yeah, it's time to sh shut up, Roger. Again, if you see this video, shut up. Don't put any more YouTube videos. If somebody comes to interview you, Yes, say, sorry, I don't want to interview. Write, write your thoughts, put up blog articles. But stop going on YouTube, man. It's not for you. You're too old. <laughs> put gardening if you want. If Roger Hallam doesn't see color, doesn't understand the importance and only sees the emergency, you are a proto-fascist. Roger Hallam, you are proto-fascist. And this is problematic. And if you don't want to hear the truth, take out your first demand. Tell the truth. By the way, I mean, uh, I'm again uh, the XR decolonized uh, coordinator for Belgium. So, oh, really? Uh, <laughs> but since um, I'm decolonized XR's coordinator, we are also thinking of maybe doing a direct action uh, in relation to get awareness and to get visibility on this. But it's very hard again to convince because XR is full of white people. They don't understand the refugee crisis. They say, oh, this is not part of the climate emergency. <laughs> like, what? Uh, Shanti. It's been so incredible hearing from you today, talking to you today, listening to you today. All that's left to ask you is when are you doing your stand-up tour? <laughs> <laughs>